and Anna over at the Young Turks are not happy with Kamala Harris's most recent political strategy. And it's very ironic that they are basically the only people on the liberal side who are calling out the fact that Kamala decided it was good politics to form an alliance with Dick and Liz Cheney. That's right. The same neocons that the Democrats were calling war criminals over the Iraq war just a few years back. Suddenly now they're the best people ever. And nobody on the liberal side seems to be mad about this except for TYT. So I guess in this regard, credit to them for doing so. But we'll show you that here today. So folks, I'm Vince with Resist the Mainstream. If you enjoy our content, please do us a big favor by hitting that subscribe button down below. And why should you subscribe? Because doing so goes a long way in ensuring we can keep bringing you videos like this. It's also totally free. All you got to do is hit that red button. And with that said, let's get into it and hear why. The hosts at the Young Turks are not happy with Kamala Harris and uh, kind of turning on the entire campaign as we speak. Check it out. Our only hope is that Trump uh, just gives up. Like, and I don't mean like literally, of course he's not gonna do that, but he's kind of de facto doing it where he just melts, right? And he just is so unelectable that, that she wins because this is hopeless. What is this? We're going back to the 1990s. I love Republicans. I love bipartisanship. The Republicans have such good ideas. Might that encourage people to vote for them instead of you? Good point, by the way. Fantastic question. I have no idea. And what Republicans are you talking about? See, they don't understand modern day politics at all. They're still, oh, um, we're going to get the John McCain Republicans, the Dick Cheney, Mitch McConnell Republicans. No, those are corporate Republicans. Exactly, perfect. And those corporate, those voters don't exist. So you think that because your donors are all corporate Republicans and corporate Democrats, that there's this giant subsection of the country that are like, oh my God, if she would just work with corporate Republicans to help big business, we'd vote for her. No, the undecideds are barely follow politics. They're not John McCain fans or Dick Cheney fans. They want you to help them. You need to be a populist to do that. So running towards these corporate Republicans is a disastrous strategy. It gives your opponent a rhetorical marketing advantage because you're saying the other party is good. It picks up no votes at all. And it leads you in the wrong direction where you're seen as more pro-war and pro-business when you need to be more populous and telling those undecided voters, hey, I'm going to deliver for you. I'm going to get you something, not I'm going to get Dick Cheney something. This is the worst strategy in the world. And I know this is pretty spot on analysis, Chank, completely true. OK, but have you maybe considered that the reason Kamala Harris is sucking up to the pro-war, pro-big business, corporate Republicans like Dick Cheney, as you are referring to it as, may be because that's what she stands for, right? Because that really is the truth. On the 2024 ticket, if you are a neocon, if you are the ilk of the George Bush Republicans, I'm sorry, your home lies more so, it's just true, lies more so in the Kamala Harris campaign than it does the Donald Trump campaign, right? Donald Trump is the guy who came along and took a battering ram to the political establishment. And that didn't just include Hillary Clinton. It included Jeb Bush and the corporate neocon warmongers who were in control of the Republican Party. Now an anti-Trump coalition has formed, which includes those neocons. And by the way, Kamala Harris has welcomed them with complete open arms. Shank Uyghur is right about that. But, uh, you know, again, maybe do some introspection there as to why you are supporting the pro-war, pro-business uh, ticket here. Well, for Democrats, they think, no, 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 no. If you have the worst strategy in the world, don't tell anyone. Just compliment her on the strategy. But then she won't be able to turn around. And it's not like she hasn't turned around. She turned around earlier in this campaign. She was doing a brilliant job in the beginning on populist economic messaging. And she turned around to this terrible message. I'm hoping she'll turn around again and go to a correct strategy in the last three weeks. But you can't get us through their consultant heads, all those stupid Democratic consultants destroying this party in this country. Now, 
All right, I'm just going to hold back and just move on to The View because they disagree with you, Jenk. They think that Kamala Harris has been running a perfect campaign. Oh, they're so stupid. So let's start with uh, Sonny Hostin, who insisted uh, that Harris's strategy was flawless uh, because of the amount of money she has raised. Like, that is the main indicator oh, of a successful great. campaign. Yeah, the donors. <laughs> let's take a look. Yeah, it's genius. Kamala Harris's political campaign and strategy has been flawless. She hasn't done a single thing wrong. You know how you know that? Look at the polls. Look at the betting odds. Look at the early voting. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Typical propaganda from The View. But what else would you expect? You know, it's like watching North Korean TV. But for the Democrats, like that's basically what The View is, I would argue. But OK, let's hear what they have to say. I think that Kamala Harris has been running a flawless campaign. And that's why she raised billions of dollars, a billion dollars. I think it's because of uh, the momentum that she has. I think it's because people believe in her. And I think people are, are, are showing that by the amount of money that they're willing to give to the campaign. I think we have the press to blame for a lot of this about, you know, what you always say, you don't believe in polls. Mm. I'm with you now because I'm reading the press. First, it was Kamala's not doing enough press. Then she goes on this huge press tour. What I would like the press to talk a little bit more about is mm. Trump is in hiding. He didn't do the 60 Minutes uh, interview. He does not want to do another debate. He's in mental decline. Obama's speech was captivating in Pittsburgh, yet instead of talking about that, we're talking about uh, what he said before the speech to black men. Oh, and by the way, the sky is green. Uh, up is down and uh, forwards is backwards, I guess, you know. Donald Trump has increased his support among black voters. <laughs> I just, why do you think that is? Anyway, I, look, I, no, I am gonna go back to it. Even if, let's say, best case scenario for Kamala Harris, cozying up with neocons like Dick Cheney works out for her and gets her across the finish line. I need Democratic voters to please just explain to me, why is it that you guys really want the Democrat to win? If the Democrat is willing to open her administration up to neocons who do not possess the same values as us, right? Fantastic question. But of course, that assumes that the Democrat voter base really has values, you know, when in reality, they're kind of just empty vessels. That's the truth. There's a reason that we kind of meme them as either NPCs or like I support the current thing, you know, BLM, COVID, Ukraine, Dick Cheney's amazing now, whatever it is, because that's literally what this is. OK, they're just like empty vessels that just go along with whatever the current thing is. They don't really have thoughts. And so you're trying to say this to the MSNBC viewers of the world, Anna, and you're not really getting through. Because again, they don't really think. It's just like, oh, well, that's what uh, Joe Scarborough told me to support. Yeah, Dick Cheney's amazing now. Oh, we love this. So I, I think you're trying to make a rational appeal to a very irrational group of people in fairness, but I do understand the point. I do. If the Democratic Party becomes the new party of neocons, why do we care so much about getting the Democrat elected? No, they, they have one. I just need to understand. I need to understand because, guys, OK, I don't care about the party's label. I care about what the party is going to do to make our lives better. And if the signaling right now is we're going to be like the Bush era Republicans, what is the point? Yeah, so look, there is no point yeah. left to these corporate Democrats. The only point is survival. So you know what I think. I think Trump is. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The central conclusion seems to be that the Kamala campaign is losing people, right? They're losing the progressives like TYT because she's cozying up to Dick Cheney and actual principled leftists, which I'll give them a little bit of credit here for, are turning around and saying, well, this is not what we support. What is this all about, right? They're losing the support of black men in a lot of areas, which is fundamental to Democrat turnout in a lot of the key swing states. It just goes on. They're losing Muslims in the state of Michigan over the Israel Gaza stuff, as well as some social issues. They're losing Hispanics in the Southwest because of the border issue and the economy. It just goes on and on. You really have to be wondering at this point, where is Kamala Harris's authentic path to victory? 
And is, is there perhaps a reason why it sounds like the Kamala supporters and the mainstream media and the Democrats have been spiraling and panicking for the past month? I don't know. You let me know down in the comment section below, folks. But until next time, I've been Vince with Resist the Mainstream. Hope you enjoyed and peace.